everyone and welcome to the webinar. Hope you all had a blast on Australia Day. I am Beatrice Lam, the Field Marketing Manager for Barracuda MSP APAC. Joining us today is Luke Smith, he's our Regional Account Director, and he'll be taking you through the presentation today. The webinar should take around 20 to 30 minutes, so if you have any questions, please use the Q&A panel and submit them. And as per usual, we'll go through your questions at the very end. On that note, Matt, I mean, Luke, I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Beatrice, for the introduction, and thanks, everybody, for joining today. I'm very excited to share with you on how you can demonstrate value to your clients. Our theory is, is if you can build and retain more clients, you'll definitely be contacting us to buy more security solutions from us. In the next 30 minutes, I'll go through the common challenges faced by IT service providers and show you the five best practices to demonstrate value as suggested by other managed service providers. After that, I'll show you our complimentary tools that will help you demonstrate value to your customers. And lastly, we will take any questions that you may have. Our aim today is to help you build a value centric mindset so that your customers are more willing to invest in your managed services that you're offering. So since we're talking about value, we'd like to start off by sharing some of these complimentary resources with you. You know, human error remains a major source of data breaches. That's why we've created these one page threat spotting sheets to help you and your customers spot the top 13 different types of email threats that we're seeing. Feel free to share these with your customers, put your own logo on them, leave them around the lunchroom for them to read during their breaks. We will share the download link at the end of the presentation, but we feel this is a great way to get the conversation started with your clients and also to educate them. And here is some of the other popular resources we have. You may have seen the 13 email threat types that you need to know ebook. It's still as relevant as it was when we released it last year. And this is where we derived the threat spotting sheets from. It's basically just an ebook that explains in detail how the sophisticated attacks are occurring and gives you detailed examples and damages to business. So you've obviously can go in with that information and discuss that with your clients. And then we also have released our latest spear phishing top threats and trends report, which was released just before Christmas last year. It has a wealth of information that highlights the current threats that we're seeing in the market. And we do that quarterly. Again, I will share a download link at the end of the presentation for anyone interested in learning more. So let's get kick-started. First, I would like to ask a question. Are you communicating value to your customers? Do you think your customers clearly know the value that you are bringing to their business? We believe it's critical to communicate your value. Although the answer is obvious, you will be surprised that many MSPs are not necessarily doing it. They're just simply too busy doing the work. You know, building a solid technology portfolio is essential for a successful MSP, but it's just one part of it. MSPs seek to establish a unique position in a crowded marketplace. And we feel by offering a value that your clients can't get from other providers proves that to them. So to answer this question in one sentence, Value is everything that your customer is willing to pay for. If you don't communicate that, why would your customers want to stick with you? So how do you get started? The first step is to avoid the five common pitfalls as pointed out by other service providers. You know, the work of delivering an MSP service is largely a technical issue. You set up a server, you install an application, update some patches, reset a few passwords. For every task accomplished, there is a benefit to the customer, such as a productive employee and or smoother operations. But the idea of demonstrating value isn't about the server, the application or the patch. It's about whether the customer themselves perceives that what you're doing for them is helping their business from the day you start servicing them onwards. And, me and so many MSPs miss the boat on demonstrating value, succumbing to several common pitfalls as we've displayed here. You know, probably the first one and the most common that we see quite often is over treating a new customer. You know, it's always exciting to close a new contract, support a new network, meet new people, or do deals with different businesses or industries. You end up doing everything you can to make sure that you build a solid foundation to build a long lasting relationship. You know, as we know, the over treatment can't be sustained. You'll need to over treat the next customer you have too. Am I right? 
The end result is that your new customers see your over-treatment as normal. Once the customer is fully onboarded and the face time decreases, their perception of their value can change and the perception of their value to their business decreases as well. So it's worth, worth always looking at how you're onboarding new customers and how you're treating those new customers. You know, letting reporting go to waste and reporting with value. Reports are an absolute must for MSPs to demonstrate their value because reports on their own don't provide customers with the information they need. You know, you need to work with those reports and tailor them so they provide customers with information, insight, and visualization of both the state of their network and the work your MSP has accomplished during the reporting period. But too often we see MSPs fall into the habit of just sending default reports along with their monthly bill. And they let their customers interpret the report on their own. And obviously the customers don't interpret the reports the same way we do. MSPs need to offer some form of explanation as to what these reports look like and how our customers can decode them. So our customers can understand what the work the MSP does for its customers. Without this context, customers are likely just to look at the, uh, just uh, are likely just to take the good work of the MSP for granted, which therefore lessens the value that you bring to their organization in their eyes. This is why it's so key that MSPs ensure that the reports they are sharing articulate the value versus just the work completed, as we mentioned earlier. You know, misalignment with the customer. A customer's needs change over time. You know, the on-premise email server that you managed for them last year may now to be switched to a hosted email server to accommodate their now, their now disparate remote workforce. You know, simply offering a renewal contract or simply auto-renewing a product for a customer without fully understanding their plan for growth and changing needs is very short-sighted. The idea of adding value is not a one-time event. It's something that's done every time there's an interaction service call meeting with your customer. And this can be done over quarters and many years. I guess what we're trying to say here, misalignment occurs if the services you are providing aren't staying a step ahead of your customer's needs. Your customers need you to be the master of the next best thing and they wanna take advantage of it. You know, without this kind of internal MSP growth, customers begin to think the MSP is not equipped or cannot support their growth plans moving forward. And last but not least, mistaking your time for value. You know, MSPs are internally focused on profitability. You know, profitability as an MSP is a function of the time a technician spent with a given customer, you know, versus how long it's taking you to do the task. This thinking can often find its way to the customer where discussions around work performed are a lot more about the time spent on the projects instead of discussing the value that these actions brought to the customer. You know, if you had a down server, the customer will certainly appreciate the fact that one of your techs spent 18 hours straight working on resolving a down server for them. But if that server isn't up and running after those 18 hours, the customer won't see the value in the time that's already been spent. From a service de delivery perspective, MSPs that aren't starting with value and working backwards towards service are missing it. Everything your MSP delivers is about how a customer perceives it rather than all the work you put into it. It's important not to make this mistake. If you do, customers will quickly see that you're not adding value and will simply move on. So what are some of the practical ways you can demonstrate value to your clients? The good news is, is there are plenty of mature MSPs out there who have already traveled down this road. And what we're hoping to do now is share some of the best kept secrets with you so you can get an understanding and start thinking. Next, we'll share the five best practices that can help you keep your customers understanding why they are important to your business and that you are diligently and continually working to add value to theirs. You know, schedule a periodic customer meeting. Sounds simple, I'm sure we all do it now. You know, the last thing you wanna do is for your business to be little more than, you know, you do the work and they write the check. To do this, it's critical that you establish a regular cadence of review meetings with each of your customers. This will likely be more a quarterly meeting or a longer time frame may work for you depending upon what your customer's requirements are. You know, just remember anything longer than a quarterly meeting may mean that you're out of sight, out of mind, 
and anything more frequent may give may not give you enough time to demonstrate the value. So it's best to have these meetings in person where possible. Where possible. The meeting itself should help push the agenda of demonstrating value, but there are a few specific goals in these meetings that you want to achieve to ensure your customer feels like you are delivering for them. You know, cover the current state of the environment. You need to provide an overview of the customer's network, where it stands today. Highlight any issues with hardware or software, such as a server coming off warranty or software needing new licensing. Problems you're encountering in the camera environment as well are also key to highlight. And any problems experienced where appropriate and how those problems were solved. Be sure also to discuss the work accomplished since the last time you had that meeting. Do this through the lens of what the state of the environment looked like in your previous quarterly meeting and how it's changed since then. Use reporting to help your customers visualize the work you know, and see the increase or the better performance that they're seeing. Because this will help you demonstrate value from a historical point of view. Hear your customer. It's important as in any relationship to allow each side to do some talking. Be certain that there is an opportunity for them to discuss problems that they hear from their employees, shifts in their business strategy, and to generally provide feedback on what they like and don't like about your ongoing services you're providing. You know, hearing your customers' needs demonstrates present value to them. And lastly but not lastly, discuss new services. Whether as a result of hearing your customer concern or as part of a newly minted service offering, it's important for you to discuss how you can continue to add value to your, new, to your customers. You need to focus these discussions around the value to your customer based upon their current needs and not on what the service does and what it costs. You need to present value. Even if they don't take you up on the offer of new services, what this demonstrates to your customer is that you're always forward thinking and looking for new solutions to solve upcoming business problems for them. I guess what we're trying to say, the key here is having constant communication with your client ensures that somebody else doesn't have the opportunity to have a game changing conversation with them before you get the chance. Yeah, you know, as per that meme there, you don't want to end up being that guy. You know, second, you need to deliver value-driven reports. And as we've mentioned earlier, the key phrase here is value-driven. It just can't be a bunch of numbers, pie graphs, charts that mean a little to the customer. The goal here is to use reporting as a means to communicate your value. For example, when providing security services, you wouldn't show a customer a number of successful ransomware attacks last month report because we'd hope that that reported value is zero. Instead, you'll be wanting to show an assessment of both last month's known vulnerabilities across the customer's network and this month's report to show a comparison of how more secure the network is, as well as you need to communicate to them about the work you've done over the last month. You know, be certain that the reports presented to customers are graphical in nature. Your customer isn't an IT person, so they need to be able to understand. You know, we don't want to make your customers work here add value by considering what they want to see in these, in these value-driven reports and then tailoring them to their needs. Then there is a question of how many reports. The answer lies in starting with the value you want to convey and working backwards to the reports necessary to do it. You obviously don't want to go overboard and have over 50 reports for every customer that need to look over every month, nor do you just want to do one or two. The idea here is to determine how you add value and then have an appropriate number of reports to help communicate that value to your clients. I guess the practical insight here, and this has come from Don Finbar, a CEO of Rampart Hosting is, you know, once you know exactly the work your business does and how it'll impact the customer, don't put the responsibility on the customer to figure out how you're adding the value. You know, as Don said, make sure your clients understand what you are doing for them on a regular basis. Review it formally and don't just assume that your clients will know what you are doing on their behalf. As we mentioned as well, third, frequently communicate with your customers. You know, as your business evolves, grows, changes and pivots, it's important to inform your customers about these changes. The focus here isn't to sell to them on the fact that you're switching vendors, pivoting to a new business model or taking, you know, starting a new practice within your organisation but to instead let them know about the new vendors you're working with and how you can add value to their services, which you know, 
in their mind means they may not see value in your new partnership with your new vendor now, but that doesn't mean that they won't see that value in three to six months time. In some cases, you can obtain content from the vendor's partner program that can help you clearly communicate the product or the new services you're looking to offer. The communication about this changes the way your business operates can, the communication about this can change the way your business operates and can be done as part of the periodic meetings if you feel that that's a good way of doing it. But we like to think of it as also as, good an excuse, as a good excuse to keep the lines of communication open and in between those meetings. So feel free to reach out if you see something there that you think your customers could, you know, will value or could change their perception. I guess we've got some more practical insights here for you as well from Matt Hoffman that I guess this is really key and something that I think a lot of us forget that not every interaction with the customer needs to be about business. You know, as Matt Hoffman said, check in with your customers at least twice a year. No motive, no upsell, just a simple call by to see how things are going. I know with COVID that's got a lot more challenging, just dropping in and seeing customers, but there's nothing to stop us from making a call. You know, what we need to remember is both you and the customer are investing in the relationship. And this will enable you to build that relationship outside the services you provide, and that can make a difference. You know, as we mentioned earlier, you know, treat every customer like they are new. So rather than just treating your new signs, maybe consider treating everybody the same. You know, we know it's easy to fall into the trap of assuming your existing customers are comfortable with your services, and therefore they don't need as much of your time. What we do find is that most MFV in turn lose customers by leaving that relationship for too long. What you need to do is actually give your customers more face time. They'll help you build that relationship stronger. You know, we need you to make a more conscious efforts to spend time with each and every customer the same. And obviously spending quality face time, whether it's through a video call, being able to go out on site, or actually being able to take them out for lunch, makes them feel like you're their only priority. In turn, this makes them see that you're invested in their success of their business. And lastly, but not leastly, adopt a value-centric service level agreement. You know, any MSP worth their weight has an SLA, but most SLAs are very focused on the levels, level of service provided. Your current SLA likely has tables outlining services, response times, you know, service coverages, outages, what will happen. Whilst those are important, what we believe is you need to start shifting the focus of the SLA to include content that emphasizes the value of, that your services bring. Think of an SLA as a document that not only outlines your contractual obligations, but also helps educate the customer on how you will determine the value. You know, the use of key performance indicators and metrics are used at this point to measure the delivery levels you're promising. And then obviously think about educating the customer on why these levels are important to them and how achieving certain metric equates to you know, a better solution for them. You know, example, more customer uptime, better user productivity, better security. Um, there's a plethora of different things there that you can highlight out of those reports. So here are some more tips from other people as well that we deal with. So Jeff Cannon, the service manager of A-plus Computers and Services says, you know, don't sell services, sell value. You know, customers don't know a good MSP from a bad one. The game changer is to focus on the value you bring them instead of on the service details. You know, don't sell the customer on your automation and security suites. Sell them on how you can help their business grow. You know, the other thing we need to remember is it's about them, not you. You know, we as MSPs need to consider our customer priorities as being more important than the services we deliver to them. You know, keep in mind what's important to the customer, not the MSP. Customers want to see a return on investment or get peace of mind that problems will be reduced or eliminated. To sum it up, we've tried to highlight five of the questions we think that MSP should be using um, as part of 2021. You know, the first one there, can you deliver impact? If the work your team does keeps the customer operational, productive and profitable, the customer will see the MSP as part of their business and not an outsourced contractor. You know, do you offer a comprehensive solution set? You know, the scope of services you deliver adds to your value. 
If you simply manage endpoints and servers using a remote management tool, but don't offer backup, cyber security, cloud hosting, or disaster recovery, your MSP may be seen as lacking. And those customers that need those services within your database will look for those services through other providers. We find that MSPs that offer comprehensive solution sets are seen as trusted to handle anything and everything the customer needs to operate, thrive, and grow. You know, something we don't do very often is your pricing aligned with industry trends and customer expectations. You know, pricing is that two-edged sword. If it's too low, it really hurts you as a service provider. But if it's too high, you, tr you have trouble signing customers. Get it wrong either way, and you can immediately lose the perception of value by the customer. Do the research, investigate your peers. Your pricing needs to align with both industry trends and the customer's expectations. You know, can you keep your promises over time by how responsive you are? As we mentioned earlier, at the beginning of many business relationships, you know, we overtreat them, we overhandle them, we over discuss with them, and we all make promises. You know, you promise to take care of the customer's network and react to issues in a timely fashion. Top MSPs demonstrate this value time and time again by how they respond to customer issues, requests and changing needs, and obviously reporting that back to the customer. And lastly, but not leastly, relationship value is relative. As humans, we look at something and we decide if it think it's, we look at something and we decide if we think it has value to us. Valued MSPs are thinking about their long-term relationship with the customers. They're always looking for ways to show customers they are front of mind and are invested in their customer success. So what I want to talk to you about now is just some complimentary sales tools we have. So we've kind of covered off a bit of the sales stuff and I hope you've all got something out of it. Um, at Barracuda, obviously we're very much about educating our customers and educating the end users, as well as giving you sales resources to help and assist you guys in doing business with your customers. We understand life as an MSP is very busy. You guys don't have time to be building all of this collateral and that's why we do it for you. Um, we've got some really good sales tools. You should be using them. And over the next couple of slides, we'll actually go through and just give you a bit of a description about them. I'm sure some of you have already seen this before, but once again, I cannot stress how important this is for your business. Customers we see performing these scans traditionally outperform many other MSP partners we have within our business. So first of all, I'm gonna start up with the email threat scan. It's free. There's no, nothing to sign up for, very simple to use. We've just launched the latest revision of this tool. Um, and you'll actually see that a bit of the formatting's changed and become more aligned and a bit more prettier. Um, I guess the key thing that we use this tool for is it enables you to identify gaps in your current customer's email security solution. The email threat scan allows you to do a six month historical scan. And it'll actually highlight and show you any threats that have bypassed your current security solution and have ended up in users' inboxes. The key thing, here, the key thing to remember here is if these threats are identified by the email threat scan, they are still residing within your customer's mailboxes. So that threat is still there, ready to be run. All it needs is somebody to click on that email to get that process started. So as you can see here, here are some of the screens that we highlight to show you and give you an example of the information that comes out. Now this report when run by the MSP is available for the MSP and obviously you can take this report into your customer to have the discussion. So as you can see here, over this domain that we're looking at, we've been able to identify that there's been 37 fraudulent emails that still exist within their Office 365 tenancy. You know, the other thing we think we provide is visibility into which employees are most susceptible to attacks. You know, I guess what that does is it enables you to build a service or offer training around those, service, around those employees to the business in order to improve that security posture. So as you can see there, we give you the risk summary where we look at things like the types of different fraud. And then you'll also see on that chart below there, we also show you the employees at risk. And this, can, this is all automatically done. So we can derive this information through our API access in Office 365. So we know in that organization who handles invoices, wire transfers, and we can highlight them for you. So obviously if you were gonna start you know, an educational training or phishing training here, you'd probably target those at risk employees first and not the guys who are in green. 
We also give you visibility into the customer's domains at risk. So you can find out which domains are not protected by DMARC and which domains can be used to send fraudulent emails as well. And we also provide details on the threat analytics. So you, the MSP, can better understand which popular tactics are being used across your customers to attack them. Now, just to highlight the bottom email, I hope you can all see this here. This is an example of the email threat scan and basically it's smart use of AI and API interface to be able to go through your email. So the email, as you can see here, is an email that's been sent internally between two customers. And we can actually identify here that the senders, the email address here, ita.29883, is not the traditional email that ita would email Alexi from. So with running Sentinel and our email threat scan, this will actually highlight that it's not a sender's typical address. Now, this is generally something that we would expect an end user to do. I guess what we're doing is we're trying to take away some of the chances for them to take that risk of clicking on that email. And due to the way that we can textually read the email, we can actually read the email and where we get special requests, we can highlight them as well. So, you know, as the essence from here, we've quarantined this because it hasn't come from into a standard email and it's coming through asking for a special request. It's a perfect example of a phishing campaign. We do also have a web application scanner for those of you who are looking after customers' applications or services on the web. So this product here, once again, is another free scan. And what we do is we actually do a scan of the customer's website. So we'll test their port. And then we actually give you a detailed report. They'll actually dig down into what vulnerabilities the customer might the customer might be experiencing. So I'm not too sure if you can see the information there, but we've done a scan on a very simple website and we've actually worked out that it's hosted by Joomla. So obviously during these scans, we've actually found that the customers or the WordPress or the Joomla sites haven't updated. So there is quite a few security holes left on that website at the moment. So this is, as I mentioned, a free tool. The report comes out free. And I guess what it does is it gives you a checklist to go back to the customer with where you can discuss how you can improve the security and then obviously build a project around that to offer value. The other key thing is, is your customer may not be aware of how, um, how vulnerable their current website be. And this is a great way of showing them. As I mentioned, we are all about educating the customers and providing the relevant information. Anyone can walk in and go, you know, your website's not protected, but when you actually hit them with cold, hard facts, we find it changes the conversation and customers are a lot more open to having discussions around it. So just to kick into the portfolio, um, to simplify it for you, anything that's considered a data protection or a backup unit is highlighted in orange with the logos. And obviously anything in uh, blue is what we classify as a security product. So we have a range of different products and services that we offer MSPs and service providers um, in order to be able to build and offer their customers. So just to give you a quick run through of these, we have IBU Intronus Backup. It's actually a bare bones backup unit. So completely back up to the cloud, held in Barracuda's cloud storage. Um, no hardware required. Really great tool for customers who just need a cloud backup and are looking for something where they don't have a requirement to keep that on site as well. We obviously have Barracuda backup. This is an appliance based backup solution. You know, you can deploy one appliance in your data center, multiple appliances out to your customers and control them all via the one backup unit. So it's a great solution if you have customers who want to keep the data on site or locally. Um, these appliances can be stored in data centers, even stored you know, in the customer site if need be. We have our Barracuda as Essentials range, which includes all our gateway email security products, um, including our cloud archiving and our brand new cloud to cloud backup, which we just released earlier this week, version three. Keep an eye out, there will be a webinar coming up early next month that'll, demo, that'll show you the new version three and the features. So keep an eye on your inbox, you'll definitely get an invite for that. We obviously have the Barracuda firewalls and they're available in many different formats, you know, virtual, physical, public cloud. And on the MSP side, we even offer a fully managed service where we will meet with you and the customer configure the firewall and we will manage it for you on your behalf if you don't have the resources internally to be able to handle it. We have our web application firewall, which as I just presented, we had the vulnerability web scanner. Obviously these two tie hand in hand together. Um, if we can scan it and find the fault, we can actually protect it via one of our web application for web application firewalls. So, you know, definitely reach out to us if you have customers who have needs for that. We do know that a lot of customers have migrated to cloud 
resources. And this is a great way of just ensuring that the data that they've stored there is secure. We have our web security gateways for those of you who want to monitor where customers are going, what websites they're visiting and how long certain partners are spending on those or certain employees are spending on those websites. Um, we have Sentinel, as I mentioned, our AI tool. It's a great addition to anyone's security stack. It brings that additional layer into Office 365 that you don't have. And the way I like to think of it is it puts a gateway above every individual mailbox. So we no longer have to worry about a business email compromise attack and that email being, that threat being pushed through the internal tenancy without it being scanned. We have Managed Fishline, which is our education-based training program. We do it a little bit different to everybody else. You provide us the email addresses, we do the phishing campaign and we provide the reports at the end. We understand our MSPs don't have time to set these projects up and they can be very time consuming. Have content shield for those customers who don't have a firewall but still wanna retain some control over those remote notebooks. We can block YouTube, Facebook. Um, you know, we have a built-in scanner so any files downloaded to your local notebook will be scanned prior to coming in. And we also give you the ability to, you know, stop connections to malicious websites or maybe websites that don't fit in with the persona of the business. So, you know, stopping people from watching Netflix during the day on the business machine. And then last of all, we have Managed Workplace, our RMM tool, which is a great way to be able to monitor, manage your customers. And I guess the key thing with an RMM is we're all looking to become proactive and not reactive and, you know, resolving or informing our customers of any challenges prior to them actually seeing it. As I mentioned earlier, here's the link for the new threat spotting sheets. As I said, these are great resources. Many of our customers rebrand them with their own information and leave them on you know, lunch tables. Some customers even use these as a targeted mail out where they're actually sending this information out. The great thing about these sheets is they explain what the problem is and the attack type they give an example and they also highlight a little bit about the damage it can cause a business as well. It's a great way to start the conversation and it's a great way to educate your customers as I've mentioned already. We also have our email security resources. So the top 13 email types, Threatbook, it's a great resource to download. And if you're not, I would suggest doing it very soon. And we also have the spear phishing top threats and trends. Um, it's a great report as well, which goes through the last quarter and highlights what threats we are seeing. As you may be aware, some threats evolve, some threats are persistent and some threats just pop up every now and then. This is a great way of knowing what's around and I guess understanding the threats so you can have those conversations with your clients about how you can protect them from them. So I guess the key takeaways we're seeing at the moment is, you know, solving the human problem value. The success or failure of MSP doesn't lie with whether you're seen as the most techn technically proficient. Instead, it's found, it's found in whether the customer sees value in the work you do to help them grow and maintain their business. You know, I guess the key thing is, is we'd recommend formalizing the process so you can help ensure that the ongoing communication with your customers is always on key and always focus on how you can add value to their business. You know, if 2020 has taught us anything, our customers are constantly innovating, pivoting, turning. And if we're not across that, they'll seek to get the resources they need to do that pivot or change their business from another partner. You know, secondly, run the ETS and web application vulnerability scanner. They're free. They will give you the information you need to go back to and speak to your clients about what's going on in their current tenancy. And obviously the key thing is, is it's educating your customers at the same time. We feel, as I mentioned, that that's really key. You know, a recent report throughout the APAC region had one, I think it was three in five directors thought fishing was literally, we're going for a fishing trip. You know, that's scary when you think about it, especially considering how much press these threats have received in the last 12 months. You know, and lastly but not least, like, download the threat spotting sheets, use them, send them out to your customers, start the conversation. You'll be surprised how many times that customers have left these threat spotting sheets and they've actually had a phone call afterwards going, I had that happen to me. That opens a pathway for you to have a discussion with that customer. And if enough of those, I've had that problem come through, there's definitely an opportunity for you to you know, increase their security, show your value on how you can make that disappear. 
We also have some other great resources to help you grow. And I do bang on about these all the time, but don't be afraid, do use them. So we do obviously have barracudamsp.com. It's a great sales, marketing and business resource to help you grow your business. It does focus a little bit on security and it does focus more on you, the MSP, about how you can improve and add value to your customers. You'll find industry articles on there, you know, information from industry experts. It's a great resource, a great way to get you thinking about how you can improve your business. We also have Barracuda Security Insights. So this is a free website available publicly facing. It's csi.barracuda.com. This actual table takes all the information from all of our various different threat vectors around the, around the world and all our different products and feeds it into a chart so you can get a rough indication of where we're sitting at the moment. We try and break it down into email, web and network as the three vectors. Just a little pick, uh, food for thought for you all. You might have heard this before. But since the launch of COVID, we have actually seen a significant decrease in web and network attacks and email attacks have exploded exponentially. So I started with Barracuda about 14 months ago now. When I first started, the email threat component was only about 70% with the other 30% shared evil, evenly over web and network attacks. What we're now seeing is that email threats are making up to 90% of the threats that we're seeing through our threat matrix. Obviously, if people aren't behind the firewalls, or aren't behind the businesses, there's no use hacking them. And Office 365, it's great, it's scalable, but it's great and it's scalable for the attackers and the bad actors as well. If they get into one, they can get into many. And lastly, but not leastly, Smarter MSP. Once again, very similar to barracudamsp.com. This one has more industry experts and does really focus on, you know, key things that we're seeing across the MSP channel. Um, as I mentioned on that channel as well, they do have quite a lot of industry experts and there's a wealth of information about how you can structure your business, structure your reports. You know, there's also information about how to build, you know, your SLA agreements. So feel free to use those resources and, you know, if they do help, you know, we're very happy to see that. The other thing we don't want you to forget about as well is we do have product demonstrations available online. So don't forget about these. They are on all of our key products. They are short five to 10 minute videos. Great for your sales team to review. Also good to present to customers as well. If you have a customer who's interested in one of our products, it's a great way of sending a little bit of information through and giving them a better understanding of the product if you, if you need it. Bear in mind, we're also available if you do need that. So don't hesitate to reach out to me or make contact. More than happy to help and assist. And on that, I would like to thank you all for your time this morning. I hope you've all got something out of it and I'll pass it back to Beatrice to see if there's any questions. Great, thank you. Look for sharing with us those practical insights. I'm sure some of you can turn those to interactions for this year. It's Q&A time. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A panel and submit them. And um, I can see we've got a few in the queue. So let's go through them now, Luke. The first question is from Eric. Can you show the email scan link again? No problems. My apologies. You can also get it at Barracuda, uh, Barracuda MSP. Uh, just one second, I'll just bring this up. Barracudamsp.com forward slash free scan will take you there anytime. The other key thing to remember is when you create your first login, it gives you the ability to run scans on multiple customers. So you can actually run, you don't need to create a new login for every customer. You can create a login for yourself and then you can actually sign in and then run that scan in there for customers. So we have customers who can have 40 or 50 customers in there. It'll keep all those reports together for you. And obviously it's a great resource that you can draw back on in a couple of months time to go back through and you know, if you haven't made a sale, it's a great time to go back and have a chat to them again about the possibility of, you know, if it's a good fit for them and if there's a need for that within their business. Thank you. And another question regarding the threat scanner, can we use it unlimited time? Correct. Unlimited times, no charges for it. You may occasionally get a phone call from me because it does flag a marketing call to give you a call to see how you're going with it. Um, but that's about it. Um, from there, you can run it, use it. There's no requirement that you buy anything from us. 
And even if you aren't a customer, which I have a few who aren't, they still use our email threat scan to you know, be able to educate their customers. Thank you, Rick. And the next question is from Patrick. Where can we book a demo to go over your email products with my technicians? Yep, um, demos are really easy. If you'd like to book a demo, simply drop me or Beatrice or anyone within the team an email. We'll shoot you back an equity link for Matt Caffrey, our sales engineer. And from there, you'll be able to pick a time that suits you and your team from his calendar and book that session with him. Awesome. And the next question is from Greg. What has worked really well for your current partners? What has worked very well? Yep. Ah, sorry, I'll just miss that. Um, I guess the key thing that, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation is, I feel like I drag on a little bit about the email threat scan but it is a very powerful tool. Um, what I have seen through the COVID pandemic is, you know, obviously we have well over a hundred MSP partners, various sizes, you know, from ones and twos all the way up to, you know, 80, 90 employees. And we found that the customers that really derived their value and focused in on certain segments at the moment. So security has obviously been a very hot topic for the last 12 months. And I guess, as I mentioned, the email threat scan has enabled those partners who have honed in on security to actually go out and present to them and show reports and information and start those conversations around security. We all know that, you know, I guess some interesting figures for everybody here is that, you know, within different markets, there's various different spends. So for example, in the United States, the standard IT budget sees up to 30% of it spent on security. And in Australia, we know that that figure is much lower. It's around 10%. So I guess the question is, is are we not as good as selling it as what they have been in the US or is it just not a requirement here? And I think the biggest challenge I've seen the last 12 months is that, you know, we've changed the way we do business. You know, emails become very important. People are distracted. They've been working from home, the office, there's been kids at home. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of opportunity for, you know, a tax fire email and various other th threats to get through. And I guess, the key thing is, is that if you're not having those conversations with customers, somebody else will be. So I guess, you know, focusing on the, focusing on security, providing tangible information and reports such as the email threat scan or the vulnerability scanner. And then, you know, honing in and finding out what your client's requirements are in that space is where we're seeing the most growth with our partners. Awesome, thank you, Luke. And lucky last, the last question is from Andy. Do you offer any other rebrandable materials for us to share with our customers? Correct. So we do actually have an MSP partner portal. Um, and the MSP partner portal basically delves into all the marketing, um, it, all the marketing resources we have available for our MSP partners. So what you will actually find in there are one page sell sheets, you actually find a few sheets that go through and explain, you know, how to handle various different um, various different situations with your clients, as well as you'll also find that a lot of our campaigns that we run are available there. So not only do we run the campaign directly out to market to you, the MSP, but we actually give you access to those campaigns for you to be able to market those campaigns out directly to your customers. You know, we know the life as an MSP, you're very busy. Um, so we're trying to make it as easy and as simple as possible for you guys to be able to get relevant info out, keep in touch with your clients, like we pointed out, and then also provide resources that we feel educate them. You know, too often we go in trying to sell a product or sell a solution, where I think education is really key in, you know, them understanding why we need to go and do this. Um, and I feel that, you know, when you get that across with your client, it leads to a much better project. Thank you, Luke. And just want to add to that, I've been helping some of our partners on an ad hoc basis. If they have any special requests, we can offer the rebrandable service for you guys as well. So um, that's something that we can support. And let me just double check, right? That's all the questions that we have. Yeah, if you want to find out more on how we can help you grow your business, please feel free to reach out to the team. As you can see, our details are on the screen. And just before we go, I'll be hosting the next webinar, which is Marketing Guideline for BC MSP. I'll be talking about B2B marketing trends, share some strategies for business owner, and um, I'll have a few campaign ideas that you can launch right away. 
So we will send you the registration link in the follow-up email. So please keep an eye for that. So that's it for today. We hope you learned something new and thank you so much for joining us and see you next time. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.